Actually, this, well, this presentation will be on a quicker topic because it is something that um, before I was speaking about the Seed Music Transformer, which devoted me this whole year. And this is something that is still in development. Um, I would like just to give a few, a few information to just have discussion, which I think it is the most interesting thing about this presentation. So what I'm presenting right now, it is a work called Towards Seed Music Information Retrieval, uh, a unified approach using multitask transformers. So what is this all about? Um, well, when we process uh, music documents with the, all of the evolution that has uh, optical music recognition, uh, we usually tend to use practical applications that have raised from these works. We have some examples, like for example, the Rodan system from uh, the McGill University, then Muret, uh, OMMR for all, which are, is also addressed in this workshop. So they have a common feature between them, is that they extract and process several information from music score documents. So for example, what can we do right now with music documents? We can perform, for example, the OMR transcription and the OCR of both the lyrics and the text with uh, systems. We also can perform layout analysis. We can also do more complex tasks on, or there is research on things like such as search or numeral analysis, et cetera. We can do many tasks about it. So, but the thing is that they, they go from a common source, which, which are music scores in this case, which is music scores documents, and also that information it is complementary. Complementary. So, despite all of the shared features that we can find between tasks, there is currently not a common framework in the, that groups them into a general concept. So, this leads to the following: if we want to uh, produce a practical application for OMR. We have, for example, for the tax of OMR, do a staff-wise lay layout analysis and perform end-to-end -end OMR with a specific system. If we want to perform layout analysis, we need an object detector that can be in another techn technology. Then if we want to do o OCR, the same, we can do line detections and then perform end-to-end -end OCR. And if we want to do all of them, we need an object detection and specific systems for that. So the thing is that, this in a practical application, it is hard to scale and also hard to maintain because we, we are dealing with several technologies that address single tasks, but they are also sharing a common source and common knowledge. So um, the thing is that because of that, we uh, this gets hard to develop in practical applications. So we came up with the Seed Music Information Retrieval concept which is, uh, well, it is by the abbreviation SMIR. So it is a challenge related to music information retrieval, which, which, sir, which in the same way of document understanding for uh, transcription of documents, uh, we wanted to address it as an umbrella term that groups all the tasks related to information structure and, structure and retrieval from music score images. We want a concept for all of them. So this Seed Music Information Retrieval Challenge seeks to find unified solutions to these shared tasks, as well as the relationships that are among them, the, the shared information that can help uh, to perform better on all of them. Uh, it is a concept that is in very early development. And uh, in this paper, what we do is to define an initial set of tasks for that joint solution. So we conceptualize three task families. The one is parsing tasks that have those that extract the transcription and content of the music scores, such as OMR, OCR, full parsing. Then we have layout instruction tasks that are layout analysis. And then query, we identify query-based tasks, which are, for example, more interactive with the users, which is selective OMR and pattern matching. Pattern matching is just doing a query of a pattern in the music score and identifying the regions that have those or that pattern. Uh, the spirit of the field is, as I say, propose a common solution to all of the tasks. And in the paper we propose, uh, based on autoregressive transformers for end-to-end, -end, a solution that goes uh, for all of that, because transformers have a low inductive bias and they can be conditioned in the language model to generate answers depending on that input uh, on task definition. So we propose the seed information retrieval transformer, also known as SMIRET. So the architecture of SMIRET, it is the same of the seed music transformer that I presented before. 
But instead of just giving the music a score, we also prompt the model with the task that has to that has to perform and should music information retrieval. In this case, we can condition it to perform a specific task uh, for extracting information of the music document. So the way it does is that the encoder performs this uh, representation and the decoder receives a level with the task that has to per perform, for, for example, full parsing, OMR, layout analysis, or a query. In this case, the output also it is expected to differ from different tasks. In one, we will get the full transcription. Uh, in the other one, we'll get bounding boxes, etc. So, and everything can be converted in this case to a JSON file, which is usable by end users. So we expect that into a more application side to be, for example, used in a in a music processing software. So to join everything into a, a common language, uh, for music, we use diagnostic encoding. It just defines music, but the shape and the position in the stuff. Uh, then the text, it is defined as the ASCII target. We, pre we perform prediction character by character. And for bounding boxes of layout, we use the pix to sec approach, which use absolute position annotations in the pages. So here you have an example of a bounding box with the uh, coordinates. And well, it will transcribe into that if we perform a real case uh, scenario. To experiment this, these are very preliminary uh, experiments. Uh, to test if the model is able to handle all of the tasks at the, at the same time. We use a mensual data set, the Motecta data set. What we do is pre-train with synthetic data in the full parsing task. It gets both the music and the, and the text. And then it is fine-tuned with curriculum learning also into the uh, rest of the tasks, which are the, those six that I, that I uh, showed before, and into the real data. So the preliminary results is that the parsing tasks are quite OK. We get a 10 symbol, uh, character or rate and a 5 almost similar or rate. Then the layout analysis is not that good. It is good classifying the regions, but it doesn't get that well, the bounding boxes. And the selective OMR, which is a query-based task, it is not that good. It, um, it isn't able to uh, get really well the bounding boxes that has to be transcribed. And in pattern matching, uh, um, let's say that the accuracy is mildly OK, but well, the, 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 the intersection over union like it knows how to detect where the uh, patterns are, but it is not very sure if they are there or not. So we have like very, very a lot of room of improvement for that. Um, so here are some examples that I, show, that I can show you in a, in a practical application that we did. So if you perform a full parsing, you will get like the full transcription of the document, including the sections of the document that are within. Uh, as you can see, like the notes are in agnostic notation and the lyrics are in, uh, in, char in chart set. Then the layout analysis, you can observe that it's, it is able to identify uh, well if a region that selects is uh, of music and of lyrics. But the problem is that sometimes it avoids or over repeats some regions into that. And then for queries, for example, what it, what it does the model in this case is that given a query, um, it identifies and tells the bounding box of the music uh, state or the music stuff that, that it contains that, that content. So as I say, these are very, Preliminary results, it is just to present what we are currently doing with this uh, transformer architecture and the definition of seamless information retrieval, because as you can see, now we can do several tasks with a single model, which is way more maintainable in this case and, and easier to implement. And, uh, well, and we can profit that information uh, with a lot of more extent than having separated systems for each task. So the development roadmap uh, for that is to improve, for example, or is to improve the performance of on, on overall tasks. So this goes, of course, by improving synth synthetic generation, but also putting more focus on non-parsing tasks. Because we observe that it is good on performing parsing tasks, but the other ones have a lot of room of improvement. And we are also seeking for new tasks, so we are open to new ideas and proposals that we can have. Also searching into more data sets and of course improvements 
on the architecture itself. Also, we have to compare to other systems to that. And that's all. So uh, I hope you were interested. I'm sorry that I have to go too, too quick. And well, we do not have uh, source code for that. We are, um, uh, we are developing it, but it will come soon. And I hope you were interested and we can talk about the topic and discuss uh, many things about it. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you again for a great presentation and great work. Um, I'll open the floor for questions. Right, if, okay, yeah, Jan? Uh, so, so far this is just with agnostic notation, but I presume there are plans to include the actual semantics, right? For cross-model retrieval yeah. organization, okay. Yes, yes, definitely. But the problem is that um, we have a problem and that's something that we have to research also is that the data sets, they are not all in the same encodings. And also, we are also trying to find out if we can uh, train these with these joint data sets that they do not contain all of the information of all of the tasks. This is just preliminary on a data set that has everything. But the way of evolving this work is try to find out if this can be also a, a challenge that can be addressed with different data sets specialized in each, each task or having partial information. Thank you. Do we have another question? If not, I'll go with one. Uh, so I guess my question would be, what were the challenges uh, while designing a vocabulary that is effective uh, in encoding multimodal data, like the music tokens, the text, the um, bounding boxes? Well, I think that the most challenging thing is to represent layout-related data because, well, languages is something that can be learned through a language model. So you can use the regular tokenization uh, procedure, but tokenizing layout information in a language model is quite tricky because in this case, what we do is since there is there was a paper about that and had quite good results, the pix to sec uh, uh, approach. Um, we go we went for that, but we also saw that, for example, in the case of uh, information retrieval and detection, it wasn't well. It is a very naive approach. And also it is very dependent on the resolution of the images. So this is, I think the one of the most uh, intriguing challenges is to find out a better uh, encoding for layout information and boxes and things like that, because uh, for the moment, the, the model is very biased to the resolution of the images and also the, the format of them. Well, we, we don't want that because we want also to get into that. And uh, for the rest of the things, we follow the same approaches that they do in document understanding, which is try to unify tokenization the way it is done and rely that the language model is able to learn that. Mm -hmm. um, I had another question, but I'll save that for the session. Uh, Yuri, go ahead, please. Uh, have you uh, looked at encoding uh, relationships between uh, symbols, like encoding graphs and tokenizing those somehow? Like uh, be because we've got the music notation graph as a one of the representations, and I think the next uh, presentation is going to be about some graph recognition. So, is there a way to encode that into the output of the transformer somehow? Well, well as, as, as long as, as we can uh, compute it through, or it can be processed through a language model, I think it is assumable. Indeed, uh, another spirit of the work is that it is not constrained to a single language it's that the model can be prompted and can be ordered to uh, perform in many languages and, and represent music uh, in different ways that the user may be interested in. Because also that will also add some richness on the knowledge of the information of music themselves. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you very much, Antonio, one more time.